I recently left Amazon because I hit the Amazon cliff. And we'll talk about what the Amazon cliff is in this video, but essentially, uh, what happens when you get an offer at Amazon is you get a four year stock package. So the breakdown of compensation winds up being base salary plus what's called bridge cash. I'll get into that in just a second, but base salary plus bridge cash for the first two years. And then year one, your first year, you get 5% of stock granted to you. You get access to 5% of the amount of shares that they gave you over four years. Year two, they give you 15% of your shares. Year three, they give you 40%. And year four, they give you 40%. So here's what winds up happening. Year one, let's say you get a base salary of $150,000. Just throwing out a random number here so we can have this conversation. But let's say it's base of 150, and then you get a bridge cash of $50,000. Now, that bridge cash looks like ordinary income for you. Um, f all things considered, you get a monthly paycheck, and it's gonna be $200,000 total the 50,000 bridge and the 150,000 base. Now, Amazon typically doesn't pay bonuses for a lot of roles, so it's just bridge cash plus base. And then at the end of your first 12 months, you get 5% of your stock. So maybe get another $10,000, just call it round numbers, 210,000 year one. Now, year two, what happens is you get your base, you get your bridge cash once again, and you get 15% of your stock. So let's say that's $25,000, right? So you have you know, $235,000 total compensation, just clean round numbers. Year three, bridge cash goes away. Now this is kind of weird. You get paid your base, 150,000, but now you're getting access to 40% of your stock. So if the market is doing really well, you should be getting paid a lot more money than your first years, uh, your first two years. Same thing with year four. Hopefully the stock is on the upswing. Now, the problem, and it's a gamble that anybody takes while joining a company and getting stock, or specifically Amazon for that matter, is if the share price is $3,000 when you join, well, and it's you know $5,000 after four years, then you've had a windfall with the amount of shares that you've gotten because it's grown, and now you get access to that year three and four if you stick around. Alternatively, if the stock plummets and uh, your bridge cash goes away year three, the stock plummets, you get access to 40%, and now it's worth dirt, right? This could, this could be a reality in certain situations, and uh, you know people are predicting that the stock market could crash at any time. I don't necessarily think Amazon is going to plummet. I think they're going to keep on going. But when I started looking at the numbers, I started really thinking through whether it was gonna be worth it for me to stick around after four years. Because for me, it was just base salary with a couple extra shares here and there that were doled out for you know a handful of performance reviews over the years, but they vest like uh, like a carrot stick in front of you, right? They're, they're, they're two years out or 12 months out. So they try to give you just enough to stick around and dangle that carrot a little bit. But when you really look at the numbers on paper and what you're worth on the outside market, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to get promoted. Um, you know, I had a number of conversations with my boss and, uh, and my boss's boss and in, in any normal situation, I probably would have not uh, ever said this type of thing, but I had a great relationship with my boss, and I was like, look, I don't really want to be promoted uh, here at Amazon. It is not advantageous for me whatsoever. I get a crap load more work and responsibility. They pressure test the crap out of you, and I get paid uh, a slight bump in salary because what they do is they they level you up and it's hoorah, congratulations all around, and then they dump a crap load more work on you um, and more responsibility, so you're working even more. So now your time value of money drops. And uh, on top of that, you get put at the absolute bottom of the next pay band. So let's say, for example, the next pay band was $300,000 a year, and it went from 300 to 450 or 500, whatever it might be, right? Um, well, they're gonna start you at 300 or 310. Absolute bottom, and I don't know why they do it, but they do. Um, and there's no leverage. You can't, you can't do anything about it. You can't be like, 
no, sorry. Uh, which, you know, I, you wish you could do that, but you can't. You can only do that type of thing uh, when you're going for an external offer. And I was comparing numbers from any number of employer on the, uh, on the outside world. I can get the exact same job title, senior product manager, and get a massive raise and get new stock and get a bonus, right? So there's all these pluses and I'm in the exact same role <laughs> with no extra responsibilities. So um, this happens to, to, to a handful of uh, tech companies, but Amazon in particular seems to be really brutal about this. I don't know why they are, uh, well, I do know why they are uh, like this actually, because they want to keep recycling the talent. And I, I tell people this externally all the time. I'm like, I hit the four year cliff and they're like, what the hell's that? I'm like, well, they pretty much stop paying you well after, after four years. And people look at you like, why on earth would they do that? And um, you know, it doesn't make any sense for me, but it does make in, uh, a lot of sense for the employer. They don't want uh, people to stagnate and be, be at a company for you know, 25, 35 years, just be complacent. Uh, it's really easy to become complacent in a role. I mean, I think it only takes about two years for you to be in a role and uh, you, you, your autopilot kicks in, right? 80% of processes that you go through uh, during the day are, uh, are brainless. Um, you can basically do your job in your sleep. You know, when I was at American Express, there were people there for 25, 35 years. I could never do that. Uh, first of all, it makes no sense from a leverage perspective. Uh, I, I think you constantly got to be looking uh, for outside uh, pressure testing what you're worth in the open market. That's very, very important. Uh, if you're trying to uh, grow financially, you got to make that money uh, so you can put it to work for you, so you can invest in things that make you some financial freedom. That's very important. So anyway, that's the rant on the four-year cliff, why I left. Um, it was advantageous for me to, to go into a new organization. And honestly, I really enjoy the, the, uh, you know, the mental stimulation. It's like, I'm, I'm in a role where I actually have to learn something again. Uh, I was definitely feeling in that kind of, you know, two year mark in the role that I was in. Cause I had, I had lasted four years at Amazon. Well, Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Uh, hopefully you break down the four-year cliff for you, why I left, and um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video.